but irrespective of the diagnosis of the CBD, the acute treatment of a DAH, once we diagnose that this is the DAH, we need to treat these DAH with the corticosteroids and immunosuppressive agent. These are the remain the gold standard for the patients. Currently, there is a lot of data regarding the recombinant activated human factor 7, but uh, now they are just uh, going, I mean, in the studies and maybe in a few years, we will able to know whether it is also helpful. But whenever we diagnose this TAH, the pulse therapy is the very important thing. In the pulse therapy, normally prescribed the methylprednisolone that normally uh, comes with the name of a solumedrol, the same drug that we used in a COVID, you know, a lot. Uh, but here we give it as a 500 to 1 gram. That depends also. Like if we are very uh, sure that the patient is DAH, then we can even give 1 gram. And if we are not sure, we are just suspecting, then we may start with the 250 or 500 gram. But at the same time, it is not single, uh, you know, the specialty decision. In the DAH, we involve the hematologist, we involve the intensivist, we involve the physician, we involve the pulmonologist, and then, you know, the decide. Uh, we involve also rheumatologist and all other uh, uh, specialty and then decide about the treatment, number one, whether to start or not, and whether if we, not, we need to start, then what is the dose that we need to start. Normally, we give the pulse therapy for four to five days and then gradually taper it uh, as a maintenance dose for the oral steroids. The other immunosuppressive agents are the cyclophosphamide, azathioprine, methotrexate, folitrex, mycophenolate, mofetil, or eternacept may be used if, if the case is a very severe and the patient is not responding. In addition, it is not that single drug of this immunosuppressive we can use, no, in addition to the uh, corticosteroids. Plasma is uh, indicated for the DAH, specifically if the patient is a diagnosed case of a GPS or we diagnose this time the GPS or maybe some other vasculitis also, but only if the the titer during the diagnosis, the immune complex titer is very high. That means the disease burden is a very high. So uh, the severity of the DVS, uh, the DAH, we have uh, this uh, European score uh, for the vasculitis. Uh, to just decide that all treatment is to be divided in the two phase. That is a remission and then a maintenance phase. So this, uh, when whenever we diagnose the DAH patient, we need to just give the high dose of steroids for four or five days, and then uh, we can give, you know, on a maintenance therapy. And further depends on this European vasculitis study group. We can further divide this uh, group uh, in a different category, the limited category, early generalized, active generalized, severe or refractory category. And then depends on this category, we de decide about the maintenance therapy. And the maintenance therapy, we can start maybe with the, after cyclophosphamide, maybe with the azathioprine and methotrexate, maybe with the mycophenolate, mofetil, leflunonamide or cycloserine, or maybe the, uh, sometimes if the patient's not even responding with this, then etarnacept. Uh, especially in the Vesners, this etarnacept is not that effective, uh, especially for the remission. And the duration should be around uh, 12 to 18 months. So we'll start with the pulse steroid and then decide about the maintenance therapy and uh, and then uh, uh, decide like which drug needs to be given and uh, this is uh, uh, to be just decided like which class the patient comes whether it's in a limited class whether it's an early generalized or active generalized class or maybe the severe class depends on the symptoms depends on the organ involvement depends on the renal function problem depends on the what are the total vital function affected and uh, accordingly, we'll decide about the maintenance therapy. But this is all about once the patient is hemodynamically stable, patient comes out of main, uh, you know, the life-threatening issue, patient is maintaining saturation on a room air, just to decide like what maintenance dose we need to uh, give depends on the class. So I'll uh, come in the conclusion that DAH is uh, clinical pathological syndrome. And uh, obviously, we have seen many uh, diseases can cause the DAH and the common cause is Wegner's Jerk Strauss syndrome, Micropan, Good Pasture syndrome. Whenever we suspect the DAH basis on the x-ray and the symptoms like hypoxia, anemia, hemopsis, we need to take a proper medical and physical history to understand that it's a DAH and we should not delay the bronchoscopy if we are suspecting the DAH. And once we see, you know, the serial increase RBC count and color changes in the bronchial aliquots, 
we need to start the treatment uh, as early as possible. And if we have uh, the patients of a DAH with the renal involvement, we need to take a biopsy so that we can decide which stage the patient is and what are the maintenance therapy that we want to give to these DAH patients. So DAH is a life-threatening problem, but if we uh, you know, think that this could be the DAH and diagnose these patients early and start the treatment early, I've seen many patients like came in a very serious, very sick state, almost dying, the maintaining saturation requiring around 80%, 90%, and if we diagnose it early and the start the treatment early, then the, you know, the prognosis is wonderful. Thank you.